Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a couple previous videos, I've been working on this homemade DIY Raspberry Pi tricorder, or Pi quarter. Now in this video, I wanted to add a new thermal sensor. I had a small thermal sensor in the past, and that only had an 8x8 pixel sensitivity, so it was pretty low resolution. I went ahead and bought a 32x24 pixel sensor, so we're going to see how that works. Now, I was going to hold off on doing this particular project until I had more parts and sensors to add to this Pi quarter, but my car has been having an electrical issue lately where about two amps of electricity are just escaping somewhere in the vehicle, and I wanted to have a thermal camera so I could aim it around the car, inside the engine, under the hood, under the dashboard, see if there's any warm spot. I figure a two amp current leak should be warming up something in the car, so I should be able to spot that. It's none of the fused systems. Pulling all the fuses out didn't help, so I definitely just have a power leak to ground somewhere in the vehicle. Anyway, the first step was to pull out the old 8x8 sensor, and then I had to go ahead and solder the pins onto the new one. It didn't come with a connection, it's just raw pins. Now that older 8x8 sensor really only had one software package that worked on it, and it didn't work all that well. I had to hack the code to flip the image around, and I've been meaning to hack the code to add auto-ranging, to add a, a center crosshair and temperature measurement, but it looks like there's more software, more code available for this new sensor that does some of that stuff already, so I won't have to remember any code as long as I just copy somebody else's project. So first up, we're going to try to follow this Instructables guide. And it seems like we can't get the uh, IR camera Python code to run. Let's try this other method from Tom Schaffner. Wow, it, it really hangs for a long time installing this code. I've been reading up on this, and I think apt-get is much faster than pip. I, I'll try to do that next time. And we're running into some import errors. I'm, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with this. I, I haven't quite used this style of uh, code or scripting before. So let's try something else. We've got a project by Everything Smart Home, who has a website and a video on this. If this ends up working, I'll go ahead and link to those. On the plus side, most of the dependencies for this are already installed from my previous attempts with the thermal camera here and from other projects. However, we are still having a few errors. Maybe we're getting some more progress. Something's trying to load. I went ahead and tried to remove everything else from the I2C bus. I had a CO2 sensor on there. So I'm getting a ton of these I.O. errors and uh, pixels out of range, things like that. No I2C device on address 33. I might just have a bad MLX90640 sensor, or I could have screwed it up when I was soldering the pins on. Before I give up on this and order a new one, I'm going to go ahead and try the sensor on a different Raspberry Pi. I've got a couple of these sitting around uh, in line for different projects. I actually just pulled this one off of my auto turret to use for something else. All right, well, we've got something. It's uh, not really registering a live view, though. And we've gone back to the no device at address 33 error again. So it's definitely looking like the sensor itself is having an issue. We're still getting some kind of short circuit on the chip on this little sensor because I'm running I2C detect and we're getting these ghost devices all over the bus. I guess we've actually found a type of ghost that you can detect with a thermal camera. All right, it's been a couple days and I have a new thermal sensor and I kind of suspect this one is more legit than the first one. That first uh, MLX thermal sensor that I got was only about $50 on eBay and this one was $80, so maybe this is the real one and the last one was a knockoff. I'm not sure. It's, it's always a little hard to tell with some of these imported products. This one definitely looks more legit. It's got a nicer looking lens, um, definitely better looking uh, circuit board here, and then it's got a built-in connector, so I don't have to solder anything onto this. I also went and bought a new miniature keyboard for my Pi quarter here. That keyboard I was using was honestly getting a little old, getting a little broken, the tab key had fallen out, and it had some other issues, so I wanted something a little nicer. This one actually fits inside the case, if I didn't have all this junk in here. I'll take out some of the cables and some of the extra pieces, and then maybe I'll have a whole standalone Pi Quarter Cyberdeck thing. Let's see if this one works any better. Definitely seeing it on the bus. I'm not seeing any other Phantom devices, so that's a plus. So let's run one of those visualization scripts and see what happens. Well, we are getting our figure one popping up here, but it's not actually showing anything. 
Now, I don't know if that's because it's not working or because the screen resolution on this is just too small. Let's try one of the other scripts that we downloaded. Well, I think that's the first time this one's given me a window. Very laggy, but we are getting an image. I also tried the third method that I found, but this Raspberry Pi still doesn't seem to know what import means, and honestly, I don't really know either. I'm not sure if that's a Python command or an environment thing or what. We're just going to ignore that since it doesn't seem to work. So one of the how-to guides I've been reading says that you can turn the baud rate all the way up to 1 megabit per second, kind of at your own risk. That 400 kilobit per second is the recommended top end, and if you turn it all the way up to a million or one megabit, it might start overheating the Pi. I'm going to turn this all the way up to one megabit just to see what happens. We might not leave it there, though. It's still super laggy, so increasing the baud rate essentially did nothing. I'm going to put it back at 400k. Now, before I put this all back together, I want to make sure that my other sensors and gadgets and junk on here still work. All right, it looks like the CO2 sensor is still working just fine. And our USB junk is still working just fine, such as the SDR. I've gone ahead and added a shortcut to the new thermal camera on my growing ever more cluttered desktop. Let's make sure that works. And if this works, I can delete all those other thermal camera shortcuts because those are for the old sensor. All right, I've gone ahead and installed the thermal camera where the old one was. We've put everything back and we're back to our portable Pi quarter rig. Let's see if it still works. All right, we can confirm that the cat is warm. Let's try a few other things, like hot and cold running water. Well, if nothing else, the pie quarter is really starting to look more and more like a tiny version of the cyber deck I just made. You can see that thing in another video. Now that our thermal camera is actually working, even if it is super laggy, let's go ahead and take a look at the car. I've left the car charging for a while with the battery connected, and it's nice and cold out, so hopefully Whatever is drawing that mysterious two amps will have a nice temperature differential now. Well, we can verify this idea has some merit because the battery charger is quite warm. However, the frame rate on this thing has gotten even worse. It's down to like one frame every 30 seconds now. It's, it's basically unusable at this point. I don't know if the sensor's too cold out here or if I've got some other issue now, but uh, yeah, this whole thermal camera thing is not helping me fix my car. So I'm going to try one more thing to mess with the frame rate. I went into the seed python ir camera.py file and I'm going to change anywhere that I see refresh rate. For example, here it's uh, 0 0.5 hertz. We changed line 67 in that code to go all the way up to 8 hertz. And you know what? It does that. 8 hertz seems like it works just fine. I've heard that's kind of the theoretical maximum for this sensor, at least on the Pi I2C bus. So I'm not going to go try any higher than that. Honestly, 8 hertz is great. This works way better than where it was, and that should be just perfect for diagnosing my car. If I have a warm thing somewhere in the camera's view, it works fine. But if that warm thing goes away, if all of the pixels are in the colder end of the range, then it just stops showing anything on the visualization window. If the warm object comes back, it goes back to working. But it seems like there's some threshold where it wants some percentage of pixels to be above zero. Well, we have this thermal sensor kind of working, although there's definitely still a few things I need to change. I want to get it to work below zero, I want to get that mirrored look fixed, and I'd like to do different color maps, which means I need to get one of those other code bases working. All of that is a little beyond my ability, patience, and attention span at the moment. I might end up asking some other folks for help. I did post some stuff on Reddit. We'll see if that's uh, helpful. And maybe I'll ask some other people. Maybe we'll do some kind of a collaboration on this in the future. But for now, we're going to stop this video here. Um, I've put enough time and effort into this for the moment. I've got other projects I need to work on, so we're going to wrap this one up. Stay tuned to see uh, more Raspberry Pi, Pi Quarter stuff. We'll definitely be doing some more things with this. I've got other sensors to add into here. And then you can check out my other Raspberry Pi quarter videos for some of the earlier builds, some of the things we've done with it, etc. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.